Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, whatever time you're listening to this. Hello, it's me, Hey Archer, episode 181. Welcome back to my show. If you're new here on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe, of course. If you're listening to this on many or on many of the podcast apps that exist, please leave a review, rate the show, head over to YouTube and leave a like there and subscribe there. It's a road to 100 subscriptions. I'm very excited. I'm very tired. I apologize. I feel like every time, every single time I do an episode, I say I'm tired. And that's maybe because I work a full-time job and do YouTube, which is fun. Keeps my mind going. Maybe you guys have hobbies and do the same. But nonetheless, by the time you listen to this episode, it will either be Christmas Eve, if you're just listening, but if you're watching, it's Christmas. So Merry Christmas, of course. My gift to you, my present to you, I have not been telling apparently a lot of date stories and that's something that people have commented on where I said that this podcast would involve all things nerdy and all things dating romance related and I've done none of those. Well, no, I've done the nerdy stuff, that's for sure, but um, yeah, I've actually not done a lot of dating type conversation or what you, you know, whatever you would like to see. I guess the, the question I would uh, give to you guys listening, you guys and gals, is what specifically would you like to know? Um, because I can just I can ramble on for hours on end if you needed me to, which I would gladly do, and I will do a bit of that today. But I'd like to know like some specifics that maybe you'd be curious about, things I can answer, or maybe just like the whole story time concept. Uh, this could be the show you listen to on your drive to work as you're just chilling at home after a long day at work. Or maybe you're at the office and you just want a good laugh at the interesting life that is Hey Archer. But I was um, reminded of something the other day, and that is, and I, I don't remember if I said this on the show before, but to my knowledge, right, to, to this date, I am the first person I know that has ever or had ever done um, dating apps before. Now, I have friends who, after the fact, when I met them, they used various sites like Craigslist or whatnot, um, but not when I was like friends with them initially. So I wanted to actually title this episode, maybe How I Met Your Dating App or some, some sort of play on How I Met Your Mother, that kind of thing. And, uh, Reason being is I've I've probably used most of them. I've probably used, if there's an app you're thinking of that's not too crazy sounding, I've probably used it. Like, for example, many of you, if you're from New York and you're listening to this, do you remember the site Mi Gente? The dating site for Spanish people? Like, this was back in high school. It was hilarious because you had that and there was a couple other ones. Uh, this is all, bef- this is way before J-Date. This is way before Match. Um, you had these pages that were, I don't know if they were necessarily upfront about dating, but you could meet other people and like go to um, parties and they would throw events and you'd go and you, you have a profile set up. Kind of like, it actually it was kind of like Facebook before Facebook to a certain extent. But on there, you know, you could message random people and that's what it was primarily used for. Um, when it started. So yeah, Mi Gente, that was like the Facebook before Facebook, kind of for dating, kind of not. You more you like more chatted with people. This was actually when you had AIM as a uh, chat tool as well. Some of you younger listeners might not have any idea what AIM is. And I'll give you a quick, quick story on AIM. Uh, you had AOL. AOL was the way you used to get on the internet. You had to buy a membership. You pay monthly for it. This is Kind of crazy to talk to you guys. I know this. You used to actually have to pay just to get on the internet. And I'm not talking about just like your cable service. Like you needed to pay to have like an email address and a browser and all that kind of thing. So um, you had AOL chat rooms and all that. You would meet people on there. But um, through AIM, that's how you would chat instantly with somebody. Text message before text message, if you would. So... Um, you go through 
all these different like websites, all these like pre Facebook things were popping up. You know, MySpace, of course, was the biggest one of all. Uh, but eventually, uh, I don't know what was the first app to like label it as such, but eventually, you know, people decided to venture into online dating. And instead of it just being, you know, text saying who you were and then hoping that when they sent you a picture via email or emails, that person, you'd actually make a profile. And the biggest one, of course, to start off, and I'm not sure if they still are the biggest one. Actually, now that I think about it, was uh, Match.com. And at this point, I'm in college. And Match.com at that time was a lot of work. Now, those of you listening, of course, if you're using dating apps, I want you guys to comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. But if you're listening... Head over to my social media, Hey Archer, across all the platforms, and let me know what dating apps you're using now. I'd be curious, mainly because there's always an app I don't know about, and I'd love to hear how your, um, how that app is working for you. If you like it, if it's free, you pay for it. I like to know all that kind of stuff. But uh, so Match.com comes out, and this is pre-swiping. There is no swiping on this. What you could do is. You make a profile, so that's the same. And you I don't know, upload pictures, whatever. You catfish the hell out of everybody with your pictures because this is pre... Let's see, Match? I feel like when I started using Match, you still didn't have like really good cell phone cameras. So those pictures were kind of spotty. Oh, yeah. I remember, I actually bought a scanner. I bought an actual scanner. not a, Not like your traditional printer scanner combo thing. Like just a scanner. So I could take pictures, scan them, put them on my on my Match.com profile. I remember that. And back then, you could, uh, yes, yeah, so you made the profile, you uploaded your pictures. And then if you didn't have a paid subscription, you could wink at somebody. And I don't, I don't think they have winks anymore on Match, last time I checked. But you could wink at somebody. And a good workaround for not paying for it is um, at that point match or sorry at that point Facebook had just like really popped off, so people in their profiles will put something along the lines of like, "Oh man, I really like my face and reading books like as like their hobby." So you knew that whatever name they used on Match that would be their Facebook name, or some sort of play on words like that, which was pretty funny. Um, but these were as I like to call the dark the dark times, the dark ages. And that goes back to the fact that there was no swiping. And back then when you had, when you wanted to message somebody or tell somebody that you like them, you had to write like an essay. You could send a wink, but nobody really responded to winks. It was rare that that happened. Otherwise, if, if I'm sending a message to Shelly Duvall and I'm like, you know, oh man, like her profile is, is awesome. It, it's funny and we like to do the same things, whatnot. There is no, you know, you sit down on your computer, mind you, because uh, there's no cell phone here. You're doing all of this on your computer. There is no sitting down there and you just swipe. No, you have to actually write out like things you liked about their profile, things you liked about their picture, um, all that kind of stuff. And the best, the best, but yet worst part about it you had to do that every single time. Every time you did it. Anytime you went on somebody's page, you could wink and then like send a message. Or maybe you just skipped the wink <clears throat> and you sent the message. It was rare you actually got a wink first. As a, as a guy at least. And if you, as a guy, if you got winks first, please comment down below, let me know. But um, yeah, that was, it was work to do that. Um. So match will always kind of hold a place in my heart because that was the first, the first big one to me, at least. Now, the other ones that you have, of course, um, that came from there, I'm trying to think of them, like eHarmony was pretty big. Um, trying to think that time specifically. I think Plenty of Fish had just like started to come up at that point. And it's funny because moving to uh, Boston, in New York, Plenty of Fish was like DOA, like nobody was really using it when I was there. And I came here and I went to, there was even an event I went to and it was like sponsored by Plenty of Fish. 
So I guess somebody pays for it. I've never met a person that does that. But um, you had, yeah, so you had Plenty of Fish, you had Match.com, and you had eHarmony. Those are the big ones. But um, one of the things that was interesting there was it was kind of the first time that, like, you would get people actually putting forth a lot of effort prior to meeting to get to know somebody. Um, and it's a lot different now. Like if you're using apps now, or maybe you haven't used apps before, um, you may agree, disagree, or have no idea what I'm talking about. But it's different now. Back then, not only were you the one sending that email, they were sending that email. And if somebody sent you an email first, same rules apply. There's a lot of detail. Um, if your profile didn't have anything in it, and it was just like your picture and a couple sentences, like you probably got skipped over. People thought maybe it was like a fake account or, or some something like that, um, but eventually, you know, Match and the other apps figure out a way to like kind of simplify it, um, and they end up taking a lot from Tinder, of course. But hands down, my favorite app all time, which doesn't exist here in Boston, from what I've seen, um, maybe it's still in New York. I'm not sure. How about we? And how about we, what was great about that was it was, it was simple the way Tinder is now where you're, or even like, okay, Cupid, where your profile doesn't have a lot, right? It's primarily pictures, but what's cool about it is you would actually, um, you have your profile, you have your pictures and, and some basic stuff, but you actually put in there a date idea. So like if I logged on today, again, on my computer, I would write down, uh, it, it starts off, how about we, and then it's blank. So how about we, and then I'd put down something cheesy like <clears throat> head to the West Side Highway and walk to um, the Skyline. I think the Skyline was out by that point. Something like that. And then people who are scrolling through how about we, it was like scrolling through a news feed and they'd see all these date ideas and then be like, you know, they respond like, Oh, great. Like, what day would you want to do that? Or that, you know, that kind of thing. So to me, that, that was like the best site as far as even an icebreaker is concerned, because there's already a date idea. There's already a concept. And now you just try to figure out if you can do it. Um, but then of course the, the best part about all this was just the concept of meeting people out of your immediate circle. So if you're actually listening to this and you're unsure about dating apps, I highly encourage it, but it serves a fantastic way to meet people outside of your dating circle. And even on how about we, it was a great way for me to even find new places in the city that I'd never found before. So one of the things that you want to, that you kind of have to do, whether you like it or not, if you're going to be dating is to be outgoing, be kind of adventurous and try new things. And a site like that I thought was fantastic for doing that kind of thing. Um, but over the years, you know, one of the things that you would um, see is as you get older, the people you're meeting kind of have different priorities. Things change. The When I first started, it's kind of that, like cliched idea where women mature faster than men, right? So when I first started, I would go on, I'd go on a, you know, a date or two, and then it's like you kind of fall into a relationship with somebody. So my first like serious girlfriend was actually a match. I think it was, yeah, it was a match.com date. Uh, I was in college. She may have been my first one. I don't re remember specifically. Um, but at that point I'm already in my early twenties. I was like, tw yeah, we went to a bar. So 21, 22, um, she was older. She was actually 25, 26. And in going out, you realize, okay, like, you know, it's fun. You, you do cool things or whatnot. You meet new people. Again, somebody outside your friend circle. Um, but that was my initial intro into, you know, we're at, people are at different stages in their lives. So she was already set on her job where she lived, um, looking for somebody to spend the rest of her life with, that kind of thing. I was just like, what new bars have opened? Uh, <laughs> where are we, we're going to go for, you know, boozy brunch or something like that. Eventually I learned to hate boozy, boozy brunch, but not at the time. 
And, uh, you know, so the priorities are kind of set differently. And it's funny, as even as I get older, as I meet different people, the priorities kind of start to change and, and morph. Um, even the criteria that you look for in somebody kind of changes and morphs. And the people that you meet on the different apps, their criteria, their motives, all kind of change app to app. Uh, so one of the things I'd love to hear from you guys is if you're looking for something serious, is there an app that you use? Is there one that you prefer over the others? Um, or if there's one that you're like, we're just going to have a good time, I go on that one. I'm looking for a nice dinner date. I go on this one, that kind of thing. Um, but it, it's a, like I said, it was really interesting to see like over the years as I went person to person, date after date, like see how everybody kind of like started to change their like what they're looking for started to change. And the thing I kind of started to realize over time was that I like to view it as people having a list, right? And there's a list of, I'm going to say three things. It's kind of like your top three priority. And as you go and you date person to person, you in your head, whether you know it or not, have roughly three, maybe even five things you're looking for. To me, it can't be any less than three. And you have your priority order. And as you start to get older and learn more about yourself and learn about what you like, and what you don't like, that's where there's certain things you can kind of give and take or things that you're willing to just let go on and just accept the person for who they are. But even jumping from New York to Boston, it almost seemed like two different types of people I was meeting in New York. And I guess I can always go into Boston in another episode. So I'll focus on New York today, but in New York, uh, I got spooked the hell out of when it came to what people's priorities were. And that'll jump me into another story. Actually, I go to a work party and I had, I think at that point when I went to that party, I had just broken up with a girl dating at the time, or she actually broke up with me at the time. And I'm at the party and I'm, I'm meeting all sorts of other people and I'm uh, running into coworkers from departments that I've only met through email, not even in person, which I thought was kind of cool. And I run into this uh, one person who I don't remember her relation to everybody in the party, but she was, you know, we're talking and all of a sudden like there's a guy like says something to her and she says something back and she just comes out and she's like, Oh, that's my boyfriend. And there's a couple of us standing there and we're like, Oh, that's cool. Like didn't even, didn't even know you had one. And she goes, uh, yeah, she's like that. Yeah. Um, it's great. We live on whatever up street. It was like on the Upper East side, I think. And, um, we share the rent. So yeah, you can say it works out. And I was, and at that moment I was just like, like this light switch goes off and I go, okay, I, I guess we, like, would you say like you guys are like together for the, the rent? Is that, is that what you mean? And she's like, no, no. Like, I mean, yeah, but he's cool too, but primarily it works out for the rent because we could split it and live in a really nice place. And my mind just was like, explosion and that's when I realized all right people's priorities they differ and for her having that nice zip code that nice apartment in New York maybe with a doorman maybe even an elevator that was priority number one the rest of it whatever the other three or five were that could vary that could come and go as as need be but that was my first that was my first vision into like almost getting spooked and saying that, wow, as people date somebody, especially off the apps. Like I remember changing like my zip codes just to see like what people would say, or I changed the wording. Like I go from living in Harlem to living in East Harlem to living Upper East Side or just saying living in Manhattan, that kind of thing. And you would, and I would see like fluctuations in people either swiping or sending emails or things like that based on that, which was crazy to me. Because, I mean, I, I do judge to a certain extent when I date somebody, but it's more of a time thing. I always try to, when I personally go out with somebody, it's kind of like, all right, you live X distance away. Is that convenient for either of us? Especially if, like, work's involved, we're hanging out on a, on a weeknight or whatever it may be. So I get it. But to me, that was, the, that was the, a mind-blowing, like, story 
being told to me of holy crap you're actually dating somebody just for the just for the splitting of rent not even because you really like the person and like insane to me but um yeah so i feel like in life as somebody who's uh an active dater and as i meet other people i realize everybody kind of has a different priority list so that's another one actually i'd be curious you guys should comment down below i don't know if you would want to if you want that public or not what would your priority list be the three things uh for me it's generally you know i live my life by treat others the way you want to be treated so when looking for somebody that's usually the first thing i look for like are they kind of a kind respectful person do they treat others the way they want to be treated does your respect to strangers that kind of thing um and then other things kind of will come and go as it as they may please i guess um but that was one of the, that was definitely a mind-blowing experience there just to see that um another interesting one was just people as i got older they were like all right well this person has a good job so that's enough or this person is willing to relocate like that's enough and then everything else kind of just falls off to the side um all the priorities just kind of go to shit uh, for lack of a better word there because they're like all right uh i'm on a time schedule here i need to make this move i need to make that move uh this just works out let's just go for it and that's another one of those kind of scary scary things but i think now it's it's going back to just the apps in general uh, I mean, nobody ever puts that kind of stuff in their apps, but it is interesting to meet people on them and see kind of where their priorities would lie. Currently, it's kind of a blessing and a curse that the apps are a little bit easier. So my current rotation, uh, my rotation for the last couple of years has been, of course, Match, because I always feel like people are a little more serious there. Then you have Bumble, OkCupid, and Tinder. Tinder just for shits and giggles. I think I may have gone on like maybe two days off Tinder, but mainly it's Match and OkCupid. I find people a little more serious there. But what's insane is just the frequency like that and the, the options that you have at your fingertips. I mean, I've actually, I remember I actually went out with a girl. Oh, two times. I've actually twice. One I got a relationship out of, the other one not so much. But actually I've gone out two times with people that we've matched and messaged on different apps, but due to just the frequency of people, never followed up with each other, like one or the other. Either I forgot to respond or they forgot to respond, or we were like, let's go on a date, forget about it, and time goes on. Uh, so that even that itself is kind of mind-blowing, which is the volume of, of apps. So I'm wondering if maybe the secret now to like a successful app would be the one that brings it back down a bit. Where there's, it's not so much about the swiping, it's it's and it's more about sending an actual email of some sort. But we're just getting so lazy now, where it's like, I've only got so many hours in a day. Am I going to sit here and just read or read and write emails to strangers who probably won't reply, or just keep on swiping and hope for the best? Not sure. But that, those are kind of my thoughts on my my apps. Again, how about we? To me, always be the my favorite the most interesting but that workhorse that one that just kind of every time you can just go back to it it's a nice safe space people seem cool there match.com it's the one i enjoy and as a person who's might maybe thinking about doing these apps remember you have to put your best foot forward that's in the the bio in your pictures in your openers that kind of thing I personally am a very carefree type of person. Maybe you are too. Um, maybe you're super open about being a nerd like myself. But a lot of times you kind of have to ease people into that kind of thing, especially if they're not a nerd. And a whole other conversation we can have another day is on should you be looking for another nerd of your level or not? It's kind of up for interpretation. But alas, it's almost a half an hour. I think it's a good amount of time for an episode. Especially an episode just on dating apps. Because you have a lot to think about. And I'm curious. How many of you are using apps? Have you had success? Not so much. I'd like to know. Is it going to be awkward for you on Christmas to kind of show up solo? And people would be like, hey, you're dating? 
what's going on? Your cousin's dating. That kind of thing. Luckily, it doesn't happen too much to me and my family. But it always makes for funny memes online. However, thanks again for coming by, Hey Archer. Episode 181. I didn't even talk about Star Wars or anything on this. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. But thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're just on the podcast apps, leave a review. Let everybody know if you liked this episode. And Merry Christmas. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.